Hey now, Brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Well, if you're watching this video, chances are you watched my review for Ars of the Consortium, and you probably already know that I love it. It's a fantastic worker placement game, a thematic worker placement game, with tons of stuff in it. Probably a little bit too much stuff. Nah, not really. But it is probably a little bit too long. But other than that, fantastic game. And while it didn't really need it, part of my Kickstarter pledge was for the first expansion, Mancers of the University, and that's what we're going to talk about today. This adds a lot of stuff, but the primary thing that it adds is a new school of magic, the Technomancers with the orange color, which uh, also adds, of course, a new uh, candidate for the Chancellor, which means a new player sheet, um, the two-sided, of course, just like everything else in the base game and the spellbook, uh, together with new orange mages, which have a new special power that are all based on research. That's what a lot of the, the orange has to do with is research and making things. Um, new tiles, new uh, bell tower cards, new scenario cards. So, like, if you uh, play, you don't have to play with the normal round cards anymore. You can play with other round cards that actually change the game drastically. A new worker placement spot to get the Archmage's staff. There's a lot of stuff in this expansion. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of it, and then we're going to come back. I'll let you know what I think. Okay, I'm going to go over some of the new stuff that comes in the Mansers of the University expansion for Argent the Consortium. It essentially just adds a lot of new stuff for the existing elements of the game, like new vault cards, new supporters, things like that. But it also adds a new sixth player color, or I should say a six player school of magic, together with a brand new type of mage worker to put out, student to put out. Um, and new spell cards, there's a new new tiles, new uh, new variants for the game, and new types of items as well. Let's start with the new uh, player color, the new school of magic, and new Dean sheet that you can start with. You have um, Sofika, Sint oh, these names, Sintavara. Uh, now, again, much like all the other, or most of the other mages, you have the exact same starting resources on each side, and the other side you have Riflom Lenshear. Ugh. Okay, and, the <laughs> and there's the spell card for those A's and B sides here, um, with uh, Sofika being the A side. I'll zoom in a bit there, there you go. Arcane Surge, she can give an opponent one mana and then wound one of their mages like, oh, here you go, oh, sorry, it explodes. <laughs> and then on this side, very different, you can choose as an action to gain a resource or gain a mark. I actually like that side a lot more. Now. You have a new worker placement spot on the board. It's not a tile. It's actually a spell that you can take, or I should say it behaves more like, an, like a vault card or a spell. You can use it once per round. Uh, so it's the Archmage's Staff, and there is an Archmage uh, supporter or a consortium card I'll get to in a moment. But you put a worker here. It loses all of the special abilities, but if you're the first one to get there and you resolve it and no one kicks you out of it, then you're going to be able to take the Archmage's Staff for the turn and that's going to give you an action that you can take depending on the A or B side where you can either gain one of these types of resources or you can choose to cast a spell even if you don't have the research for it so that's a new thing then we'll actually go to the new tiles that are in the actually you know what I kind of skipped over the new type of worker that's in the game that's kind of irresponsible uh, so the new type of worker is the orange workers and they are the technomancers that's the whole new school of magic in the A to B side. The A side is that when you put one of these, well, I'll show you one of them too. Just all over the place. Just, uh, just like with the base game, there's a lot of stuff in the expansion. Uh, but with the Technomancy, you can spend three coins on the A side to do a research as soon as you place the worker. Not when you resolve it, when you place it. On the opposite side, you can, uh, as an action, spend three coins, uh, let's see, when you place into a room, with another player's mage, you can pay three gold uh, to block a to mark a voter that player has marked. So it's like you're getting secret information, like you're spying on uh, the person that you're uh, sharing the room with. Um, then we're gonna go into the tiles. Yeah, we'll do that now. So first you have the golem lab, and I'm debating. You know what? I'm just gonna go over the A sides of all these because it's mostly the same flavor on both sides. You'll get the gist of it. Uh, just know that just like with the base game, you have an A side and a B side, so lots of variety. The golem lab is gonna give you temporary workers. You get these little 
golem workers that you can put onto the stands. They are kind of like look like loyalty badges, but they're temporary workers that you can use for the rounds uh, that'll go away at the end. And notice these are immediate spots. That's one thing I didn't cover in my review of the base game, but a few of the tiles have immediate slots. So uh, this merit badge slot says you can spend a mana and immediately uh, pay a mana to place a temporary mage uh, and lock in this room. Uh, then you have, uh, you can immediately place a temporary mage into a shadow slot. Then for three mana, you can immediately pay three mana to place a temporary mage and then take another action. Uh, the Synthesis Workshop, this is a new thing in the game. This is where you can trade in uh, spells and treasure and different types of items that you have in order to create a Synthesis item. Synthesis items are like really powerful items um, that function a bit like vault cards, but they're, they're really cool, like the sh uh, Sacred Shield. As it always, spend the mana to uh, move one of your mages that was wounded uh, into an open spot from the infirmary, which is really powerful. And uh, these are all, they're double-sided. It's the same thing on both sides. So uh, fast action, you can just gain two mana. That's amazing. Um, as an action, you can spend a mana to shadow any spot, even if your mage is in an empty spot. I mean, just really, really good synthesis items, and that's how you're going to get them is by using the synthesis workshop, although it is expensive to use. Um, the laboratory, you actually get bonuses depending on which type of mage you put into those spots. The research archive is just another way for you to get research. Um, you get an intelligence, a wisdom, and you rearrange your research freely. That's interesting. Uh, the atelier, uh, which is like alchemy based, uh, you can swap gold for mana in that one. And the last spot actually lets you draft a consumable from the vault. And then the University Tavern, this functions like the vault card from the base game where you can draft one of the vault cards, but it is for the supporter deck. So you get a first pick, a second pick, and a third pick off the top of the deck. And this one gets you buys and supporter research as well. And I just dropped that tile. Okay, then there are new consortium voters that have to do with some of the new stuff. So this is for the most technomancy, which is the new school of magic. And this is for whoever controls the Archmage's staff at the end of the game. They're going to get that vote. You have new supporter cards, and I'm not going to go through all of these, but but uh, there's ones for uh, being able to get new mages from, the, or swapping mages from the supply for each of the different schools of magic and just a lot of uh, ones having to do with the new orange technomancy school as well. Uh, together with new vault cards, lots of new vault cards, a ton of them actually, to add into the base game. Uh, you know, there's some pretty interesting ones, a lot of ones having to do with being able to shadow, ghosts, uh, shadow your mages in to new spots. There are new spells. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of orange spells in this set in order to catch up with the other spells. Um, and all of them a lot of them having to do with uh, building golems and just uh, research and learning spells. That seems to be the, uh, the major thing that the, the orange mages focus on. Now let's talk about some of the more interesting, perhaps, uh, uh, you know, most modular aspects of the game. First, we have the extra bell tower cards. Now, there's in the base game, there's five bell tower offering cards, and you'll play with them depending on how many players you have in the game, but it's always going to be those five. Well, now you have a ton of different bell tower offering cards, each with different abilities on them or uh, special effects that you get when you take them. And if you're going to use these, they tell you in the book that you're supposed to shuffle them all up every single round, meaning that you're always going to have um, different bell tower offering cards. Uh, depending on the number of players. Although, and I say this in my final thoughts, I seriously recommend always making sure that the first player card is in play so that the same person won't be first player for the whole entire game. All of this other stuff out here is actually variable round cards, meaning that these are round cards that you can use to replace the round cards that come in the base game. And they all have a different effect. Like Assassins means that you're actually targeting um, other players, uh, something like that, to that effect, or targeting voters. Then you have, um, let's see, some interesting ones. You have Political Struggle, where it actually um, changes the makeup of the consortium rows. Uh, there's one in particular, the Dimensional Rift. The Dimensional Rift cards is actually going to have you flipping the the room tiles back and forth. So again, you're still keeping track of the rounds as normal, but now it just changes the uh, changes what happens in the game as you go from round to round. There's one in particular I was looking for uh, that is, yes, the key to the university. This one here is interesting, um, it's one that I played as because you are actually, uh, the only thing that matters in the game is influence now. 
So it's, you're, you can still try to get the votes from the consortium, but all they do is count as seven influence at the end of the game. Influence is all that matters. So um, it's a really interesting uh, way to play the game. It doesn't change it fundamentally. You still want to go for those votes because there's a ton of influence points, but it makes getting a lot of influence during the course of the game even more important. And there's some other ones I didn't really talk about too much, but those are all pretty modular. You can use them or not. There's a lot of stuff that comes in this expansion. Some of it great, some of it not bad, just not as great. Let's go to my final thoughts and I'll break some of it down. Okay, well like any modular expansion, there's going to be some parts that are really good and that I like, and some parts that are like, meh. Nothing in the Mantra's expansion is bad by any means, but some things are way better and cooler than others, is kind of what I've found. We'll start with the most obvious thing, which is the extra player color, the new faction, uh, the Technomancers, which is the candidate, the spell book, the new types of mages, all these different things. Now, that part, uh, the part of getting the new types of mages and having a new candidate to choose from with their spells, that's great uh, because it's just more variety in the game. In other words, even if you don't need more variety, it's not bad. You now have a new candidate. They do a different thing. The Technomancy power is cool. It's very research-based, which is a, a very focused way to play the game, but that's not a bad thing either. So it's more variety, a new thing to utilize in the game. Now, by having this new candidate in this new school of magic, you can now have a six player in the game. Do not do that ever. Ever, ever, ever. <laughs> As I said in my review of the main game, there is some length issues to the game and you already have more than enough stuff going on. This game is really ideal with two to four players max. Playing with five and six players, no way. Unless you are making a day of it, <laughs> don't do it. Uh, but it, again, it's good to have the variety there. Now, my favorite part of this is probably the bell tower cards. I mean, I like having the new player powers and that's really really cool but the bell tower cards I felt like um, as the game went on seeing the same ones every single time were pretty restrictive so that's one of the things that I felt there was while every other part of the game had a tremendous amount of variety the bell towers in the game uh, the main game did not and now you do have that option you've got a ton of different options in fact especially since you're reshuffling them every round which I'm fine with I don't, I don't have a problem with that but I will say this, and I didn't see this in the rules anywhere, but you should definitely house rule like we did, that you play with the first player card, Bell Tower card, from the first game in play at all times. Just do it, because it is too powerful. It may not come up. You're randomizing the cards each time, and there's not that many cards, so it's probable that the key will come up, the, the first player key card will come up. But in the game that we played with the expansion, it didn't, ever. So the same person was first player for the entire game. And that's a really big advantage, especially when that player has the, uh, the neutral faction, which has the merit badge right off the bat. So they're already getting good spots that the rest of us aren't getting. Now they're getting them first, all the time. So that's just an example of how it could go wrong, but I could see this happening a lot. Even if someone has first player, twice in a row without having to do anything in particular to get it, that can be an issue. So I think you should always keep, make sure that the first player card is in play. Everything else you randomize, that should be fine. Everything else that comes in the game, very optional, I would say, or that comes in this expansion is very optional. The main thing here, besides what I've already said, is the variable round cards. Now I like the concept there because it's an easy thing to do. And so you have the round cards anyways, put some stuff on there, change it up a bit. But there's too much going on in the game already. I don't know that this was necessary. The one that we tried out was the influence point uh, card um, where influence points are all that matter at the end of the game and that the votes just count for seven influence points which still means you have to go for the votes, <laughs> but it, you know, it made it more critical during the course of the game that you get, be getting influence points constantly. Now that was interesting, and it was an interesting way to play the game, but it also was kind of unnecessary. And by downgrading, however slightly, the effects that the voters had on the game, then it, it kind of twisted the main focal point of the game, the, the main interesting thing, vying for all those votes, and to not as fun a thing. And I'm not trying to pick on that scenario in particular. I'm just saying that I don't feel that all the scenario cards are totally necessary. And chances are, if you feel like me, they'll probably just collect dust in the box. Um, 
the Chancellor's, I'm sorry, uh, I keep saying that, getting it wrong, but the Archmage, the Archmage's room where you can get the staff, that's a little more interesting. I do like that. It is another thing to keep track of and another thing that people are going to be vying for, but I like the power of it. And they went ahead and threw in a consortium voter card for the Archmage so that if you have it, you'll get that vote as well. And that's cool. I like having as many consortium cards in the mix as possible. So I think I'll probably play with the Archmage's staff from here on out, as I will also play with the um, uh, the orange player pieces and the randomized bell tower cards, except for the first player. There's a lot of other stuff in the set that's just, you can just shuffle right in. New vault cards, new uh, spell book cards, um, new uh, other voters, I believe, besides the Ar Archmage. All that stuff is great because it's just more variety into the game. So it may sound like I'm saying this... Uh, uh, this expansion is hit and miss, but I think it's definitely more hit than anything else because there's nothing bad here. There's just a lot of good stuff and then some stuff that's like, meh, take it or leave it. But that's okay. Having more variety, adding more into the game, you probably don't need to do that right away. <laughs> but if you really enjoy Argent, you'll want to do it eventually. It's a solid expansion and um, I'm actually, if, if they did every expansion this way, I think that that would be okay. That's Mansions of the University. The It sounds like I'm saying Mansions of the University. Mansions of the University from Level 99 Games, the first expansion for Argent. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.